Welcome back to the Rodcast, guys. Hope you're all doing well out there. I'm your host, Rod. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the consequences of political theater, specifically for Jim Jordan, because he has been sued in federal court by Alvin Bragg for the unprecedented interference that his specific committee and other congressional committees are doing into the prosecution of Donald Trump that's going on in New York right now. Alvin Bragg has had enough, basically, and uh, he asked a judge to enjoin the subpoena that was sent out to the former prosecutor who used to work on Trump's case back before uh, Alvin Bragg came in. He resigned under Alvin Bragg. We're talking about Pomerantz, where Jim Jordan's committee, the Judiciary Committee, sent a subpoena to Mark Pomerantz asking him to show up in front of the federal Congress and specifically the Judiciary Committee in the House of Representatives and answer questions about the investigation. I talked about that and gave my opinion on what might happen. I was basically saying that there are some circumstances where a judge might allow that, but after reading Alvin Bragg's argument, I'm more on the side that the judge in this case, uh, who's a Trump judge, but nevertheless, I think she will rule in favor of Alvin Bragg here because he has the better argument. And you guys will see that when we go over the legal precedents from the Supreme Court, which heavily suggest that what Jim Jordan is doing is a violation of devol the devolution of power, which is a fundamental core of federalist government. We have a federalist system where federal matters are separated from state matters, and the federal Congress cannot interfere with the matters of a state unless there are certain very rare circumstances where that is allowed. But in this case, there's no way that Jim Jordan can interfere. Now, first, before we get to the lawsuit and all the explanations here, I want to go over the argument, the only argument that Jim Jordan has really made, which is that he claims that Alvin Bragg admitted to using federal funds, which is not true. And that was very clear from the letter that was sent by Alvin Bragg's lawyer who was representing his office, um, Leslie Dubeck. I went over that letter like two weeks ago. I'll link that video over here so you guys can go check it out. But Dubeck's letter made it very clear that Alvin Bragg's office did not use any federal funds to prosecute Trump in his current indictment. The DA's office says, and it is a fact, that Bragg's predecessor Cyrus Vance spent roughly $5,000 on expenses incurred relating to the investigation of Donald Trump or the Trump organization between October 2019 and August of 2021, okay? Bragg became DA in 2022, 2022. So I was wrong about that too. I thought he became DA in 2021, but apparently it was in 2022. So that's, I learned something new. Uh, but Cy Vance was the guy who was initially handling this uh, potential prosecution of Trump. After he left office, Alvin Bragg came in and he took over the uh, investigation and he did not use any federal funds. So this crap about federal funds is a bunch of BS. Federal funds were never used for this particular indictment by Alvin Bragg's office. So Congress has no authority over uh, this particular investigation of, in any way. Even if it turned out that Alvin Bragg did use funds, Jim Jordan still has no authority whatsoever to interfere with the criminal investigation. Bragg became the DA in 2022 and Vance, Cy Vance, famously declined to prosecute Trump on hush money allegations. So Cy Vance had a chance to indict Trump and that's the investigation that used this $5,000. That investigation was over, okay? The new DA came in in 2022, that's Bragg, and he did not use any federal funds. So with that being said, let's now jump to the actual lawsuit that was filed. I wanna read a couple of things here just to uh, review and summarize for you guys how screwed uh, Jim Jordan is, okay? And if this judge was being 100% in line with the law, she would rule against Jim Jordan immediately. So as always, as predictable, this was filed in the federal court in the Southern District of New York, which is where I said it would be filed in my last video. This is a federal order from the federal Congress, so it, it's uh, suitable to be tried in a federal court. Alvin Bragg's office in his official capacity suing Jim Jordan in his official capacity as the jackass of the Committee on Judiciary, I'm just kidding, the chairman of the Committee on Judiciary, although he is the uh, head jackass. Alvin Bragg goes on to say, Congress has no power to supervise state criminal prosecutions. I've only said that, I don't know, like a hundred times by now. Nor does Congress have the power to serve subpoenas for the personal aggrandizement of the investigators or to punish those investigated. Trump versus Mazars. That's from a Supreme Court case where Trump was uh, fighting his uh, 
tax preppers or something for his tax returns. He didn't want them returned, and um, he wanted to make sure that they weren't. That's why he went to the Supreme Court. He lost there. Yet, that is precisely what Chairman Jordan is trying to do. He and his allies have stated that they want the district attorney to come to Capitol Hill to explain himself, to provide a good argument to Congress in support of his decision to investigate and prosecute Mr. Trump. Why? Why are you going out of your way to defend some criminal? Just because he was the uh, last president, you think that he should be exempt from the law? Because why do you ask this of all random criminals that are charged with white collar crime? Because there are many of them that are charged by the New York DA's office. You, this is the first time that you want the DA to show up violating all norms and come testify. Okay, And the law, not just the norms. This is a violation of states' rights, which conservatives, I thought, were for. But when it comes to Trump, they're willing to crumble up the Constitution and throw it out the window. Right? States' rights, gone. They don't believe in devolution and federalism anymore. Devolution of power is the a quintessential element in states' rights. The states' rights argument is based on the devolution of power, which is that the Constitution allows for the states to regulate everything that is not enumerated within it, Okay, which means that most criminal justice matters and many other matters having to do with human life on, in America is uh, controlled by the states. This is the argument that the conservatives made to justify their uh, banning of abortion federally, saying that abortion is not mentioned in the Constitution and therefore should be controlled by the states. That's the exact thing they're going against by trying to butt their heads into uh, this investigation just to defend their criminal president and traitor Donald Trump. Subpoenaing a former line prosecutor, Pomerantz, to talk about an ongoing criminal prosecution and investigation is no less of an affront to state sovereignty than subpoenaing the district attorney himself. Chairman Jordan claims he is seeking to conduct oversight, but he has no power under the Constitution to oversee state and local criminal matters. That's why Jim Jordan used the federal funds argument to say that he has authority to somehow get information from this investigation. But like I explained before, there were no federal funds used by the DA's office to prosecute Trump. The subpoena threatens the sovereign powers of the states, confidence in the secrecy of the grand jury proceedings, and the integrity of an ongoing criminal prosecution. This court should enjoin its enforcement. Uh, by the way, the secrecy of the grand jury thing, what they're talking about there is that witnesses will not be forthcoming if they think their testimony will be leaked publicly or to Congress, which means that it'll be leaked publicly eventually. So people will be less cooperative with the grand jury, which investigates and indicts criminals. So it's very important to make sure that no uh, information that is under seal gets released to the public. And if they think that the criminals can find them and kill their families like mobs can do, then they won't tell the truth to grand juries and that will compromise the criminal justice process in America. So that's a threat to the American way of life and our uh, enforcement of our laws and doing criminal prosecutions. So in the next section, Alvin Bragg goes on to explain the judicial precedents that back his argument that would enjoin this subpoena. And uh, they're very logical arguments, conservative arguments in favor of states' rights. And that's what Jim Jordan's going against. Decades and decades, probably more than a century of conservative, so-called conservative arguments about states' rights. Jim Jordan's trying to destroy all of that for Donald Trump. Okay, He's going against all of that, all of their, his core principles or his purported principles as a conservative. That's why none of these people in the Republican Party are conservative. They're just right-wing jackasses. Okay, I'm more conservative than all of them. Because I obey law and order. They don't. They don't care about law and order at all. Whenever it's a criminal they like, they jump in it. Even if Bernie Sanders, who I like, was indicted, I'd support the prosecutors. I don't give a shit. Bernie will obey the law. And that's the bottom line. Just like Trump will obey the law. My standards are the same for everybody. These criminal lovers, they don't care. As long as they like the criminal, they'll defend them. That's the bottom line when it comes to these disgusting Republicans. You make me sick. What? The Constitution withheld from Congress a plenary police authority. That's according to U.S. versus Lopez 1995. Primary authority for defining and enforcing the criminal law is vested in the states. That's again from Lopez. That division of authority requires that ordinarily there should be no interference with the state officers who are charged with the duty of prosecuting offenders against the laws of the states and must decide when and how this is to be done. Younger versus Harris, 1971, another Supreme Court precedent. Uh, federal intrusions into state criminal trial 
frustrate both the state's sovereign power to punish offenders and their good faith attempts to honor constitutional rights. Engel versus Isaac, another Supreme Court decision, 1982. The charges the district attorney filed against Mr. Trump were approved by the citizens of New York, a grand jury of 16 to 23 regular people from New York who sat in that grand jury. They did their civic duty as members of a grand jury pursuant to the federal constitution and laws of the state of New York. Like any other defendant, Mr. Trump is entitled to challenge these charges in court. He can avail himself of all of the processes and protections that New York State's robust criminal procedure affords. But rather than allowing this process to go forward, Trump and his allies have done many other things that are almost criminal. Uh, Mr. Trump in particular has threatened New York officials with violent and racist vitriol. At a march in the 25th of 2023, for instance, Mr. Trump stated that, quote, the thugs and criminals who are corrupting our justice system will be defeated. You're the only crook that I see. Okay, Alvin Bragg is doing his job. Discredited and totally disgraced. On social media, he threatened death and destruction and to wage war if he is indicted. Mr. Trump also called D.A. Bragg a Soros-backed animal. Weird. A dog whistle chairman uh, Jordan repeated on television on March 23rd, 2023, calling District Attorney Bragg the Soros-backed new D.A., left-wing D.A. Alvin Bragg. And he goes on to cite social media posts and other things that he did, like the stupid bat uh, truth that Trump sent out, um, basically kind of threatening violence against uh, Alvin Bragg. A lot of people made a big deal about this. It's stupid, but that's expected from Trump. He's a jackass. I'm a hero. I'm not a jackass. You're a jackass. But uh, that's about it for the actual filing. So the bottom line on this Alvin Bragg has a great argument here after looking at the fact that no federal funds were used and the fact that the Supreme Court precedents back his argument, not Jim Jordan. Jim Jordan hasn't cited anything because he has no Supreme Court uh, precedents to back him up. There is no precedent that gives Congress the authority to interfere with a local prosecutor's prosecution of a criminal. And that's just the bottom line. Since England, the English king had so much respect for prosecutors in English counties back before America even existed, back in the 1600s, 1700s, even the king wouldn't interfere with the prosecution of criminals unless there's some special circumstance the church and the king did interfere sometimes but that's mainly to uh, you know protect their own goons um but for any other person even rich merchants who are prosecuted by english courts and even royalty sometimes were prosecuted and there are some federal civil cases as well against uh, british royals and the king never stepped in that he just let the prosecutions and civil lawsuits go forward so even going back more than 400 years Prosecutors have always been respected by even the king of England. Now there is no king and we have a separation of powers because of the king because we don't want to be like England. But even in Anglo-Saxon jurisprudence hundreds of years ago, prosecutors were allowed to carry out their duties to prosecute criminals the way they saw fit. And of course, they have to get it all run out, run through by a judge. A judge will stop a prosecutor if there's anything to be done. But random Congress people from the federal Congress cannot interfere with a local prosecution. That's American law. Okay, that's our jurisprudence. If, even if you don't want to talk about English jurisprudence, which is very relevant to American jurisprudence, but nevertheless, even in American jurisprudence, the, all the Supreme Court decisions back Alvin Bragg's position. So in my last video, I said that the judge can basically do two things. Number one, deny the subpoena altogether and Mark Pomerantz doesn't have to show up. Number two, she can say that, well, all of this is true and there are great arguments for um, Alvin Bragg to not be subpoenaed, but Mark Pomeranz is a private citizen now. He's no longer with the uh, DA's office, so I'm going to allow the subpoena, but Mark Pomeranz can refuse to answer questions about this ongoing investigation. That's another option the judge has. I don't know which one she'll take. If she's a conservative law and order judge, then she would choose the first one and deny the subpoena altogether. If she is a more Trump friendly person, she was appointed by Trump, but that doesn't really mean anything. A lot of Trump judges have voted against him, but I don't know her thinking. I don't know her history. Um, but even if she does allow the subpoena to go through, Mark Pomerantz doesn't have to answer any questions about an ongoing investigation, and so it would just be a waste of time for Jim Jordan, but that's what he wants. He doesn't want any real answers. Like I said in my last video, he just wants theater. He wants a Democrat DA to come in front of the Congress so he can put on a theater, a show, 
to the Fox News audience and whoever is going to play this all, uh, over and over again on their shows. Oh, look at Jim Jordan. He's standing up for Trump. You, we all got to support Jim Jordan. He's such a fighter. He's trying to be the biggest ass flicker for Donald Trump in the Congress, okay, to secure his own position in the Republican Party. He's making a big mistake. Trump is never going to win re-election again. He's pathetic. Recent polls just came out yesterday showing that the majority of Americans are done with Trump and think he's a criminal. OK, only about 45 percent of the Republican Party think he's innocent. The rest of the Republicans are not sure they're split. OK, because Republicans, a lot of regular Republicans do support law and order, just like most regular Americans do. So Trump is losing the Republican Party and he's already lost the majority of Americans and he's going against the law. So he will lose on all fronts. And anybody who hitches their uh, wagons to Donald Trump's will go down with him. So Jim Jordan is headed down a bad path. He's now been sued in federal court. Lucky for him, there's no monetary consequences for him. Uh, Alvin Bragg is uh, just trying to stop the subpoenas because they're completely unreasonable, and rightfully so, because uh, Jim Jordan nor anybody in Congress has any right to stop a New York prosecutor from doing anything. They can do whatever they think is legally relevant and right, and there's nothing the federal Congress can do. The only thing that Jim Jordan doesn't like is the fact that his... A political meal ticket, Donald Trump is being prosecuted and he wants to look like the biggest fighter for Trump. This is all pure political theater. And I'm not just saying that. A lot of people on the left do political theater as well. Democrats do it too. And they make me sick, which is why I'm not with anybody. All these political parties make me physically ill to the point I want to vomit. You make me sick. Uh, but the Republicans are the worst of them all. And Jim Jordan is a, a jackass with a ridiculous comb over and he needs to go back to his office and work on his fucking hair instead of filing these ridiculous claims. He's embarrassing himself and he's going to lose in the end by hitching his wagon to Donald Trump. And that's all I got to say for this video. Thank you so much for watching. See you guys next time. Peace.